Hello, my name is Jonathan Mayhorn. I'm an adjunct faculty with the Systems Engineering and Engineering Management Program here at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And today, I want to answer the question, what is systems engineering? First of all, you've got to start with what a system is. And a system is a collection of different elements that work together to produce greater results than each element could obtain alone. Think of the whole as greater than the sum of its parts. For example, an organization or company is a system. It's made up of people, hardware, software, departments, documents, and policies. And an example would be Ford Motor Company. You've got sales, marketing, engineering, all working together to produce an automobile for the customer. And that's just an example of a system. So what is systems engineering? It's the application of science, math, and business to meet customers' needs throughout the entire system life cycle, or throughout the entire process. And so how is systems engineering different from other engineering majors or from business? Well, it's made up of three major components. You've got engineering management, industrial engineering, and business administration. Now, it's different from industrial engineering in that it has a wider perspective and covers more management topics. It's different from engineering management by it includes more math and science. And it's also different from business administration alone because it solves more technical problems. You're managing technology and people together. So what would you do as a systems engineer? Well, you would oversee engineering, business, and management aspects of a project or system to make sure all those parts are properly working together. Think of the big picture. You manage metrics, such as quality metrics or financial metrics, people, and the schedules of either the project or the people themselves. You also solve a lot of complex problems that affect customers, suppliers, and you have to present to upper leadership as well. You have to be able to sell your ideas and your solutions within the process of project. But it, you would also work on improving existing processes or designing new processes. And some of the sample occupations within system engineering, there's a lot of them out there if you were to go on career builder and apply for a job, but just know that they're all under the umbrella of systems engineering. So you could be a systems analyst, manufacturing engineer if you're in that particular side, or you could also work in a service-based industry, and you could be a solution architect, project manager, process engineer, quality engineer, reducing defects, improving the quality of the, of the process, and you could be a reliability engineer, making sure that that process or, or product is reliable for the customer. And you could be a design and development engineer as well. And one, one hot topic out there or title out there is Six Sigma Black Belt, which is basically a process improvement expert. They reduce the defects in the process and save the organization millions of dollars. So why would companies hire systems engineers? Well, because the truth is industry really needs them. Technology has gotten very complex in the last 30 years, and the employees that work at those companies are, are struggling to keep up. So industry is really hiring individuals that can work on the business side and the technological side. Can they manage people and technology together? So there's also more challenging customer requirements. Just think your customer requires your, your products to be very intuitive and up-to-date nowadays, like iPads and iPhones. So the industry has to keep up with these challenges and they need the right people on board. There's also increased uh, process and product comp complexity. Things are a lot more complex than they were 20, 30 years ago. And like I said, they need to manage that rapid changing technology along with the people. And the world is going global. A lot of competition out there and they need the right people to be able to handle global teams and global technology. So as you can see, systems engineering is needed in all types of industry. Just think of Charlotte, for example. There's a lot of manufacturing, telecommunications, banking, transportation, healthcare is improving every year. They need more and more people in that industry. Automotive, agriculture, uh, aerospace, where systems engineering started with the government, uh, construction, criminal justice, retail, environmental systems. The systems are not just within the organization themselves, but can be environmental as well. And urban planning and homeland security is a big one in the last 10 years or so. So you can see just about every industry needs systems engineering. So what's your advantages of becoming a systems engineer? There's quite a few, actually. You can learn more than a typical engineer would. You get a lot of project management expertise, 
which is much needed in the industry. You learn how to control the processes and improve the quality. And you never get bored. Every day is a challenge. I've been doing this for 15 years, and, and I never get bored. Uh, it requires you to be a lifelong learner. You always got to keep up with the latest technology, latest certifications. And you expand your creative side. Um, typical engineers use the mathematical organized um, side of the brain, but this challenges you to use the other side of the brain, which is more creative, holistic, imaginative, the design side. But you also make a difference. You impact the bottom line of the company. So they're not going to cut the person that's saving millions of dollars or improving the processes or completing the projects. And you're a change agent. You really do lead change, which is not easy to do, but you get that training within this program and within this industry. Don't just take my word for it. CNN Money in November 2009 did a study of all the jobs out there, all the different careers, and they weighted a lot of different factors, but the number one job at that time was systems engineering. Um, it had a median salary of $88,000, which is pretty good. Uh, and the top 10% made $130,000 or more. And that's with two to seven years of experience, not just right out of college, but a couple years later. But it wasn't just the money that was important to everyone. It was the high job satisfaction. They love what they do. They're, they're making an impact on the bottom line. Low stress levels, because you are making that impact, and, and people leave you alone if, if you're doing a good job. And you um, have good job security. They're not going to cut you, like I said, if you're saving organization money. And it's challenging. Every day is a challenge. And people like, like challenges. So is it right for you? Ask yourself these questions. Do you like dealing with people and technology, like I mentioned? Do you like to communicate a lot? Uh, do you like working in teams? Just about everything we do here in the system engineering program is, is team-based. And would you like to combine that engineering and business knowledge together? Do you like to solve problems? You've got to be a good problem solver. And do you enjoy using computers to help make those decisions? You also use people, picking the brains of everyone on your team to make decisions, but you also use computers to help you reach data-driven decisions. And would you like to be a strong communicator? You develop that skill constantly every day. And would you like to develop yourself as an effective leader to be able to move up into the ranks of, of management someday? And would you like to climb the career ladder? You'll definitely do that, rise above the ranks of the engineers and be able to manage the engineers and the t technology together and be able to talk to leadership. It's basically almost like a leadership development program. So what would you learn if you came to UNC Charlotte for systems engineering? Well, we use systems modeling and optimization. Say Ford Motor Company wanted to test an engine, or well, rather than producing a bunch of pilots and a bunch of engines, Within those tests, they might model it on the computer to save millions of dollars to see if that engine really works for that car. Uh, we also teach design planning and analysis. Uh, decision risk analysis, you have to mitigate or lower the risk before you roll out new solutions or products. And project management, like I mentioned before. Um, engineering management, be able to manage those engineers and technology. Supply chains and logistics are going global. You need to be able to manage those end to end nowadays. And be an effective presenter or communicator. You learn that in just about every class. And of course, we, we put some global dynamics in there so that every project has a little bit of global aspect within it, since the world is a lot smaller than it used to be. Um, so if you're interested, uh, please visit our website at scene.uncc.edu. And you can take a brief survey once you're there. And it's about six questions. And it just asks you uh, typical things about math and science and business to see if this would be a good fit for you or not. And you can always contact us through email at uncc seam at uncc.edu. Someone will be in touch with you to give you some more information on the program. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.